Well, actually, on that one, I think inside this uh, correction someplace uh, is some nerves about the election because I think that small business and all business and frankly the workforce is enjoying a very strong economic boom which is quite unexpected our critics said you know you you got to stay in one to two percent growth and we've broken out of that to three percent plus so things like corporate taxes uh, not just the big guys 21 percent marginal rate but also small business estimated to have a 19 or 20 percent effective tax rate down from almost 40 that's a huge thing I think they're worried about that I think they're also worried about red tape and regulations which has been a hallmark of the president's uh, economic growth policies uh, I think uh, people would be very worried about the energy boom which is another hallmark of the president's economic growth policy we will be pumping about um, 15 million barrels of oil per day in about two years according to the interior and energy departments it's really quite we have so much natural gas that they're flaring it burning it off and hopefully we can build a lot of pipelines to um, to uh, use that sell it to Europe undermine Russia sell it to Asia maybe undermine China so those hallmarks there are other policies and we've had a lot of health care reforms that I think have helped small business so I think they're worried about that I, I think everyone's worried about that they just why would you want to overturn what appears to be a very strong economic period backed up by pro-growth policies where let me I don't mean to filibuster uh, quit in a minute but where you have a president almost from day one after the election in November 2016 look at the, the, this confidence I'm, I apologize but this thing starts to really jump but a lot of businesses small businesses are nervous about this trade war and they're wondering win or lose the house next week just how far is this administration going to go in its trade war with China well again folks like a president who ends the war on business that's the point I wanted to make and that became apparent when these confidence indexes jumped right after the election ending the war on success and with lower tax rates you know you keep more of what you're you reward it if you're successful so I think that accounts for the confidence that's so important now specifically regarding trade um, I understand there's some uh, questions and perhaps some anxieties about trade uh, I would say as a free trader that first of all the president would like to abolish tariffs and non-tariff barriers and subsidies he is a free trader but we are stuck with a lot of foreign unfair trading practices which um, have how far been, do you take it have been harmful to the US workforce and the economy and, and I think Robert the frankly the principal culprit is China so how far do you take it the president has made his statements using tariffs as a negotiating tool it's part of his uh, quiver I don't want to get ahead of the curve he I guess was interviewed a couple evenings ago and he said look if we could reach a deal a satisfactory deal that helps both sides with China then the tariffs could be pulled I know that always is philosophy. what does that mean a satisfactory but deal on the other hand if we don't which includes the uh, intellectual property theft the forced technology transfers the lack of ownership the high tariffs on commodities and industry supplies cyber security the whole list which is very very important to us if they don't make a satisfactory offer then um, the president will continue to aggressively pursue his agenda and I think he's right to do so I say that as a free trader but you can't have free trade with this bill of attainder China is breaking the rules and we signed at the UN a tripartite agreement with the EU USA and Japan 
And that agreement is a very important agreement. Uh, that agreement lays out the brief against non-market economies, they call it, read China. And uh, what did I just hear this morning? So, did you tell me or somebody told me the ambassadors to France and Germany uh, were in China, I hope I get the story right, uh, essentially sending that message, you must change, you must change. So how far, I don't want to get ahead of the curve, there'll probably be a meeting, probably be a meeting in Argentina. In, in Buenos Aires, what's the specific goal of that meeting between President Xi and President Trump? If you're a small business, you're wondering, can, this, can they make peace on trade or not? You know, Robert, I don't know the answer to that. My crystal ball is not at all clear. The agenda is being discussed and worked on in, inside both camps. I think it will include trade. I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to get ahead of our curve. We're talking about a pull-aside meeting coming up this month between yeah. President Xi and President Trump. Well, actually, it would be a very formal bilateral sit-down, a very formal one. There was even talk of a meal, lunch, or dinner. I, I don't know. Uh, Ambassador Bolton is the lead on that. NEC, Treasury, we're all working very hard. Of course, uh, Ambassador Lighthizer, who's done a great job as our trade rep. I just don't know. I don't know. The you know, president says, I, I don't know Xi. I wasn't in the, when he came here, I, I wasn't in the government, um, so I've never met him. President says they have good relations. Okay. I hope so. I think, frankly, you know, we've been to Beijing, they've been to Washington, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think only they can break the logjam. What does it 